Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're going to do the full review on this ADC BAT 12.8 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. If you saw that one minute teaser I posted about this battery a few days ago asking for some suggestions on maybe what you might like to see. I uh, thank you all that participated and gave me some great suggestions. Some of them I may be able to do over time, a little more in-depth kind of a test. But I think we've got a fun one to do today on this. So let's get right into the battery specifications and then we'll get into the review. And I just want to mention that they did send this out to me to do a review. And... We're going to get right to it and see how it holds up. So this is what's printed on the top of the battery, and it has a lot of uh, decent information. Uh, your, your charging temperatures, discharging temperatures, storage. Also got charge current, 20 amps recommended, 50 amps for max discharge current 100 amps for max 200 amps for three seconds these are kind of typical on this size of a battery gives you a little information on series parallel connection but just right on the top it gives you some pretty good useful information the other thing of course it comes with these thread protectors Seeing that in pretty much all the batteries these days of this style. That's nice. And it also has these collapsible handles. Make it very nice for toting around. This thing weighs in at just a tad under 24 pounds. So very light, as you know lithium is, which is one of the great benefits. The other thing worth noting is that this battery came packed uh, top and bottom in this high density foam so the battery is uh, extremely well protected for travel and arrived in pristine condition like to see that they're uh, paying attention to protecting your investment and that's a good thing too i've never had a problem with one of these batteries getting here in other than good condition it also came with uh, two of the m8 style uh, terminal bolts, kind of standard, not real long, but you've got enough room to to uh, get your cables on there. They also send a registration card that you can register online with and get your three-year guarantee that way. And it also comes with a little brochure. Uh, a very simple brochure, but packed full of uh, extremely good information that would uh, let you know uh, just about what everything you would want to know. It's only about three pages long, but it gives you the uh, information that is relevant and very easy to understand. So, of course, there's the weight, 24 pounds. VMS information. This is the page I really like here. Uh, gives you the charging parameters for this. Discharging. And then the other really nice thing for a lot of you, like I didn't know all of this when I first started using lithium, was uh, the state of charge capacity versus the voltage, 100%. 14.4 and right on down the line this thing arrived with a resting voltage of 13.2 I let it sit here for one full day before testing it just so it could adjust to the temperature here and then I could get an accurate reading and it was 13.2 last night I put a 10 amp charger on it take it up to 13.4 uh, which is full, and after letting it sit overnight, it's sitting at 13.7, which is 100% full. 
And for this demonstration, the power is going to be using this PSW Con 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. We've used that for many demonstrations out here. It works well. It's kind of my go-to uh, for demonstrations. Uh, I do have uh, another inverter to review, and I'll get that out to you all shortly. But we're going to use this one uh, today. And as you can see, uh, it's reading 13.7 volts in off that battery which is absolutely correct i verified it with the meter and 120 volts just in standby position uh, this inverter is drawing 0 0.3 amps 25 degrees celsius and that's it so i have to be looking straight on the only thing about this inverter that kind of bugs me if you're not looking straight in on it it's very hard to read, but it works perfectly, so can't complain. And one more important thing, I did energize the inverter using this uh, little resistor here to prevent any sparks. I hooked up the positive uh, cable first and then energized from the negative cable to the negative uh, battery terminal before putting the, the cable in place, and that prevents you from getting any sparks. Uh, I never forget to do that anymore because I don't like the sparks and it can actually damage your threads. So when you're hooking up your batteries, you want to energize your uh, inverter first that way. So there you can see how we have it hooked up real simple. Um, and now plugged into the inverter. We're going to use this watt meter here. It's a dual outlet watt meter. Uh, so we can see how much power we're drawing. And in today's demonstration, what we're going to plug into that watt meter is that. A five cup Mr. Coffee. We're going to brew up some coffee, see how it does. This thing's supposed to draw 600 watts. Most coffee makers that I looked at draw about 1,500 watts. I didn't want one that drew that kind of power. In all the years of living off-grid, I always shied away from anything that had a heating element just because I was trying to stretch out lead-acid batteries, and it was just easier to brew a pot of coffee on the stove than plug in that and watch your batteries take the massive hit that it would. But with lithium, it's not as much of a concern. I'm going to go ahead and make the big plunge with a hot heating element and we're going to see how this thing does and then we'll see uh we know it's at 13.7 we'll see what it finishes off at how much it draws okay so this is the setup and since this is the very first time using it it recommends to uh, flush it once with water i'm just kind of curious to see uh, what happens and how much it takes uh, power wise just to do that so let's plug it in the inverter still reading 13.7. I'll plug it into outlet number one. Battery still fluctuating between 13.6 uh, and 13.7. It's not drawing any power at the moment, as you can see. Now let's turn it on. And here we go. As you can see, it's drawing 661 amps, 662. Drawing 665 amps, just flushing the thing out. So it must be using the, the heating element just to do the initial flush like it recommends. I'll just mention with uh, 667 watts uh, being pulled off that battery, it's now reading at 12.7. That's kind of what we'd expect drawing this kind of a load on that. It's going to show um, that it's taken a pretty good uh, discharge, but it, what I'm curious about is how much it will bounce back after this is done. Okay, it's just been running a couple of minutes, and now we've got some 
some drip action going. It's still pulling slightly over what it's rated at, 667 watts, rated at 600. The battery's doing fine. Inverter reading now, uh, the battery reading now under this load, 12.6. Uh, I just felt that uh, pot that is extremely hot water coming out of there. So uh, the heating element, of, of course, was on. I uh, was pretty sure about that. And now I did the old touch test on it, and it's piping hot. Well, it's only been running about two or three minutes. And I'm going to just feel these cables. Absolutely cool to the touch. Drawn 670 watts. Just about four minutes now into this test, uh, the inverter, which is uh, as accurate as my voltmeter, 12.6 under this load right now after four minutes. And as you can see, this thing's just about ready to be topped off. And that is some hot water. So that's a first for me. Uh, like I said, I've tried to stay away from heating elements, living off grid on lead acid for so many years. Uh, I'm starting to get a little more modernized now. And this is going to be great. Get some hot coffee on demand. Okay, it just now stopped. Took almost exactly five minutes to brew five cup pot of coffee. It stopped, as you can see. There is no more draw coming off of that thing right at the moment. That was it. Uh, the battery has quickly recovered to 13.2 right now. So all is looking really good. Oh, I'm so happy I set up to do this video undercover because we are getting the tropical rain right now. I hope you can hear me. I'm having to shout very loud because it's loud under this uh, canopy I'm under. Just thought I'd give you a few second clip of the tropical rain coming down pretty good. And while I'm waiting for the coffee pot to cool off and get ready to brew up a real pot of coffee now that it is supposedly clean enough to use, the battery is bounced back up to 13.3 after resting for a few minutes probably go on up to 13.4 so we barely scraped the surface of using that with a heating element that's very nice okay back for round two of it real quick it's been sitting uh, the battery resting at 13.3 right now it's been resting for about 20 minutes after that last scene turn it on there we go 663 watts i was just curious to see when i actually brew a real cup of coffee if anything changes i don't expect it's going to and i'll just give you a shot of the inverter while it's pulling 667 watts it draws it down to 12.7 under that kind of a load no problem at all Well, I'm pretty impressed so far. Uh, I actually kind of expected maybe those cables would get a little warm. Uh, they never did get even slightly warm uh, under that kind of a load. Um, I thought about, you know, a 1500 watt coffee maker, but I don't like to push the limit of my devices. So since this, this inverter and another one I've got are 1500 watts, I don't want to push it, you know, with a 1500 watt. Uh, coffee maker and I'm glad that I, I went this way. Five cups is enough to brew at any time out here and the fact that this is running about 70 watts over uh, its advertised 600 watts. Uh, I'm glad I went with a smaller one because I, I wouldn't want to work the uh, inverter past its limit so and I really don't want to draw 1500 watts. That's the bottom line. And it's starting to drip now. So I hope this video gave you guys uh, some different ideas of how you can uh, apply the lithium batteries to your lifestyle, whether you wanted to just 
throw one of these in the back of your car on a camping trip, have your hot coffee or whatever else you might want. Uh, because they're so light and with that uh, nice carrying handle on that particular unit, uh, very easy to put in your car, toss a little inverter, whatever appliances you might want to run. Uh, so, you know, camping or for an emergency, you ever have a power outage, that's another great reason to have one of these around. And then, of course, for people uh, like myself that live off grid, you just can't beat the lithium power. And one of the other things I wanted to mention is all of the products that I've reviewed, uh, especially the batteries, I have had correspondence uh, with the manufacturers and the representatives of each company. And I have to say that bar none, uh, everyone I've been in contact with, uh, uh, regardless of the brand, has been very helpful, uh, very informative, and they back their products up with a guarantee. So I don't have a problem recommending anything that I put on this channel uh, due to that alone. Uh, it's really nice to see a company, or companies in this case, that are uh, proud of their product. They stand behind it. They take care of you after you have it, and it's guaranteed. And the price of lithium keeps coming down, which is great for us. It wasn't that long ago these things were out of range price-wise for an awful lot of people. So those of you that have made it this far, thanks for tuning in as always. Appreciate all of you and your comments, all the subscribers. It helps keep me motivated to keep doing these things. Hope you enjoyed kind of a real world test here. Okay, you can see that the, the watts have gone down to zero. That pot is done, took about five minutes, maybe six minutes. And now for the, the final test. Yeah, that is one hot cup of coffee. Very happy about this. All right, everybody. Aloha. Okay, a second sign off, actually. I uh, wanted to mention that when I took it up to a full charge, I took it up to 14.4. I misspoke that of 13.4. I ran it up to 14.4, which is full. And at rest this morning, after resting all night, it was 13.7, which is full battery at rest. 13.6 is full as well, but it was still hitting 13.7. Uh, but I just wanted to clarify that I ran this up to 14.4. No problems. And the other thing uh, that I really want to uh, mention is that this does have the low temperature uh, charging protection, which would be uh, important for those of you in colder climates. Uh, it does work. We've seen others tear this battery apart that are real knowledgeable about the components inside and do those type of tests, and it passes all of those tests. So it does have the low temperature charging, which I know for a lot of you, uh, that's important. Uh, you want that kind of protection. Out here, we don't have to worry about it. So uh, that's why it slipped my mind, but wanted to mention that. This is their low temperature charging protection built in on the BMS. Okay. Aloha.